Hey, I'm Mike and welcome to Need It Make It. The Chidi Q1 Pro is a pretty good machine at an affordable price and for the most part there really isn't much to improve on it. We've done a side mounted spool holder and I'd like to do a different filtration system at some point as well. But an area that does need some attention is the central stop at the back of the bed. It doesn't allow us to easily position the build plate on the first attempt like it should. You take your build plate, you kind of position it carefully against that back center stop. Pretty close. Between one or three tries. Okay, there we go. Really, you just need to push this back into position. It should automatically center and then let it come down. It should be as simple as that. I could work on my hand-eye coordination, but instead we're gonna come up with a way to have the build plate auto align itself when you push it into place. And the final solution is gonna to have to be easy enough for anybody with this printer to do themselves. And we're gonna try and add on a little bonus feature while we're at it. So stick around. So before we go too far, let's throw together a quick test to see what might actually work in order to self-align this build plate, and then we can develop something that's a little bit more advanced. I've printed these two small parts for a quick test, and I want to see how well they would guide the plate into position. These are similar to the bamboo guides and just a bit larger. The ones on the bamboo printers are small and they do become damaged over time, so I figured something a little bit larger could take a little bit more punishment. What I need to do first is just raise up the bed a little bit because really what should happen is that this top of the bed should be slightly above the shroud. There are little adjustment knobs down below. And if you struggle at all, what's happening is that there is a lock nut or a jam nut and you just need to loosen that jam nut off. So I'm just gonna mount these temporarily. And to do that, I have a glue gun. Let's see if this does do the job to guide this into place. Well, it seems to do the job pretty nicely. Even if you're off, you just push it back to the very back corner. I'm a little surprised that it works that well. I don't think there are gonna be any conflicts, but I thought I may as well just raise up the bed just to be sure. I have two ideas here. One is to add the blocks below this shroud, and then we can add threaded inserts allowing us to connect something to the top. And here is the shroud. You can see it's pretty lightweight. Mostly it's for decoration. To remove it, there are just four screws. I printed these reinforcement pieces. They go into the back corner. You can take your drill of choice with a four millimeter drill bit. Just make sure that it's pushed into the back corner as far as it can be. And we will just spot drill. And I'm gonna switch to a three and a half millimeter drill bit. And we can drill the rest of the way through. Next, we need to add some heat set inserts into here. These are printed from polycarbonate and I've countersunk this just a little bit for the button head screw. I have M3 by 12 millimeter. And I have used six millimeter heat set inserts. I've reinstalled the shroud, just again, those four screws, pretty easy. Let's go ahead and give this a try. Pretty nice. So there is one little issue. You can get right underneath them. And that's pretty easy to fix. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a slight adjustment to this. 
but I think we can do a lot better than this. For the best solution, I'm gonna be replacing the existing shroud with a completely new one, and it's going to include the alignment tabs in it. To me, this is just the best way to get the end result that we're looking for, and it's also gonna give us a bit of flexibility in the design as well. I could start from scratch and that wouldn't be too hard, but there is an STL file of the bed already within Orca Slicer. So I can find that file, bring it into Fusion and start converting it to something that's usable. The original part was hollow, which gave it a bit of a cheaper feel. Instead, we're gonna do a mostly solid finished part. If you've never worked with STLs like this before with crisp edges, you can slice the object and most of the faces will automatically return to a single facet. Then to make this into a solid part, we can extrude the full depth with just a thin wall. And once I have that, I can extrude to the object. This is gonna fill in that pretty unique shape pretty quickly, but we're gonna be left with these triangles that protrude and they can just be selected and deleted. Any faces that are still left broken up can be selected and deleted as well to return them to a single facet. This being larger than the size of the build plate, we need to make this in several parts. And to do that, I wanted to create a sliding tapered dovetail connection. A dovetail on its own is good, but a tapered dovetail has the advantage to act like a wedge on each of the mating surfaces. And that's gonna to help to keep the joints really tight. In addition, we're also gonna create a screw connection directly below that dovetail, and that screw is going to lock the parts down so they will not be able to come apart at all. Since we have parts coming together with only very small clearances allowed for the best fit, it's important to calibrate our filaments. If we don't, the parts could end up either too big or too small, and any corners will be bulged out if we don't have the right pressure advanced settings either. So I've run the flow test and I've run the pressure advanced testing for this Red Pet G filament to get as close to perfect as I can. For a test print, I wanted to try using Pet G first because it's cheaper and I wanted to see what would happen to it when we printed with it in a heated chamber. Pet G softens around 70 degrees Celsius. I found it to be a little bit lower than that in my testing. But in any case, we're gonna be quite a bit higher than those temperatures because of the proximity of our print to the bed. So I've had a lot of trouble with this red pet G. It likes to get stuck to the bottom of the nozzle and that's exactly what's happened here. Except because this print is a fairly long print, it's deposited that blob right here. And it was pretty big and when it went over top of it, it hit it and it shifted the build plate slightly. So I have a small layer shift. There are our prototype parts, and even though there was a little bit of a layer shift, I think these are still gonna work just fine as a test. As I put these together, when the screw goes in this hole, it will lock this into position, and both of these parts cannot move. Funny, you wouldn't think that just adding those two tabs at the back would make that big of a difference, but it does. It just is so much easier for that positive connection. If we're gonna be printing high temperature materials, I need to get this side panel back on. So I'm sorry, you're not gonna be able to see as well. So what I had done is I had adjusted the three leveling knobs from below so that I can easily get this positioned and the height of the back is correct. Now that I've done that, and I've also adjusted it from side to side, I can do the platform calibration again.
Polycarbonate is going to begin to soften at 117 degrees Celsius, which should be just about perfect for this job. There are other filament types like PET, carbon fiber, and nylons, which can take even more heat, but I have some polycarbonate in stock and the cost isn't too high for that stuff. So I've made a few small changes to the design and we're going to go ahead and get these prints going. Technically, all three prints can be done at the same time, but since I'm still testing, I'm going to be doing them separately just to make sure that there are no problems. These mainly just need to stay in place and the only pressure applied is the force of us pushing the plate into position. I would stick with six walls at the minimum, but the rest is completely up to your discretion. This is the fourth print that I've done with a heated build chamber. This is for polycarbonate. So I had a 56 degree heated build chamber and I had a 110 degree heated bed for those prints and some of them were several hours long. So I have a total of probably seven or eight hours on this print. And I wanted to show you what happens when you use a material that is not intended to be used in a heated build chamber. It sagged in the middle. It's bulged out on this side. It's bulged out on this side as well. And these are the finished polycarbonate parts. That's good. That's pretty good. I like that. I don't like the look of the front. I was going for this hexagon pattern. Let me show you what I came up with. It looks kind of like blackheads with this color combination anyway. So I'm not really a huge fan of this. Ideally, this would be black. This would be dark gray, maybe black, something like that. So what I've done is I've gone back and I've modified this design and simplified it. And I've tried to pull some of the design details from the printer itself, just so that it looks like it belongs. I've reprinted one of the side pieces. I've changed the design. I didn't really like the hexagon pattern. I thought I would try and mimic something on the printer itself just so it matched a bit better. And what I've done as well is I've included this little tool holder to the side and that is for this tool. It fits just right in there. I've also adjusted this tool to include holes for magnets. Those are three millimeter by 10 millimeter cylindrical magnets. And this is not your typical rod sloth. This is a rod sloth for a two start thread. And this two start thread rod sloth will fit the Q1 printer perfectly. And this is the final version. It's a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer looking. I think this would look really good, really smart in black. Took me a little bit longer to sort this out than I was hoping for, but now we have some positive stopping points for the build plate. The new version will be open directly to the steel plate and the magnets will contact the steel plate. If you want to do any of these upgrades yourself, I will have links down there for you to download them for free. That includes the small guides and the blocks as well. All of my prints were made with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, six walls and 35% gyroid infill, which I know is completely overkill. These prints probably would do fine with six walls and fairly sparse infill. My only caution with installing the full shroud is the alignment. I've allowed a bit of clearance to make sure that the bed itself doesn't rub on it. So when you're installing it, slip a piece of paper at the back between the guides and the bed just to make sure that you have the space that's needed.
When you're done, there should be a gap on both sides and a small gap at the front as well. This printer is equipped with auto adjustment from side to side, so you can adjust the bed leveling knobs to get the height at the back just where you want it, and then you can run the auto bed level procedure. After that, you can run the bed calibration to fine tune it. And I'd shoot for the magnet below the build plate, just slightly above the shroud for the best result. I'm gonna have a link to the two start rod sloth for this printer, and I've also updated the original four start rod sloth with the optional magnets as well. If you plan on printing and using them like I did, make sure that it's made from ABS or polycarbonate or better. I've already shown the side spool holder for this printer in a previous video, which I will link up above there if you haven't seen that one. I also have a heater cover upgrade if you'd like to do that one as well, but it can't be made from polycarbonate because the heater will produce temperatures above that softening point. So nylon or PET carbon fiber material would be the best for that print. As you can see, it just did not last. I have some PET carbon fiber on order and I will replace this as soon as it arrives and it should take temperatures up to 200 or so degrees Celsius. Thanks again to my patrons for helping to support this channel and making these videos possible. And we have officially passed the 50,000 subscriber mark, which is a pretty big milestone for this channel. So thank you to everyone for subscribing and helping to get this channel to a point where it is more sustainable. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Take care, everybody. We will see you on the next one. Let's see if this thing can actually take some abuse. <laughs>